everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Michel Lacat, Medical Director of Athletic Heart of San Francisco. And in this episode, I would like to talk about high blood pressure in the setting of exercise. And I'm doing this in light of a document that was recently published uh, jointly by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology to address this, uh, this issue. Uh, but before we get started, just to review from our last uh, episode, uh, the blood pressure is usually reported with two numbers, for example, 130 over 70. And the top number is the pressure immediately after the heart squeezes, and the bottom number is um, uh, when the heart is relaxed before the next heartbeat. So what happens during, uh, to the blood pressure during exercise? Well, it depends uh, a little bit on the kind of exercise that you're engaged in. For example, if you're engaged in uh, static physical activity, like weightlifting, the blood pressure will rise and both numbers will go up. And they can go up really um, uh, tremendously. The highest reported blood pressure during exercise, during weightlifting, is uh, as high as 480, 480 over 350, which is really astronomical. Uh, but weightlifters get away with that because um, the rise in blood pressure only lasts a few seconds, you know, while they're, you know, bench pressing or, or whatever it is. And as soon as they finish, then the blood pressure goes back down to normal. That said, on rare occasions, people can incur vascular damage from these very high rises in blood pressure. Uh, but fortunately, these events are quite rare. But when they do occur, the complications can be really quite, um, quite dramatic. Now, uh, weightlifters and people who engage in static physical activity uh, can, over time, if they do a lot of uh, weightlifting and a lot of static exercise, can, over time, um, incur a thickening uh, in the heart muscle um, that is contributed to by, by the exercise. This may be more pronounced in people who have either high blood pressure or, or a, a blood pressure that is, uh, to begin with, that is uh, on the high end of normal. But, but uh, we know that that in weightlifters, the proportion of people who have what is called hypertrophy is higher than in the normal population, and higher than in people who engage with um, with regular on on you know in uh, aerobic uh, activity uh, like running and, and swimming. So it's you know it may be prudent for people who do a lot of weightlifting and uh, who may have blood pressure concerns to get a cardiac evaluation just to to check uh, periodically uh, how healthy the heart is uh, in that respect. Now, if we talk about um, um, aerobic exercise, like running and swimming and, and that sort of thing, so what happens to the blood pressure during aerobic exercise is that the top number, the systolic blood pressure, will go up, but the bottom number will go down. And that's because during running, uh, for example, the cardiac output, the, the, the squeezing power of the heart will increase greatly, but the blood vessels going to the muscles of the body will dilate. And so you will have the top number to go up. Uh, it may go up as high as um, you know, 170, 180, but the bottom number will, will drop. So if you start uh, with a blood pressure of 120 over 80 at rest, at peak exercise, it may be 170 over 160 or something like that. Now in some people, um, the, the rise in blood pressure during running uh, or during cycling may be really um, higher than that. It can be 200, 210, 220, or even more. Um, and that's even though the, the blood pressure at rest is normal. So, so we see uh, occasionally people have what is called a hypertensive response to, to exercise. And what is the significance of that? It's not entirely clear. Uh, the studies are difficult to do because you have to follow people like that for many, many years to determine if this is a problem or not. And some studies have uh, suggested that that can uh, be the first signs of chronic hypertension and that people like this will end up having high blood pressure over time. Other studies have not found that effect, so there's a little bit of uncertainty regarding um, this hypertensive response to exercise. All right, now going back to the document that I mentioned uh, published by the American College of Cardiology, um, what, uh, what do they say? Well, there are three things that uh, caught my attention in that document. The first one, they say that um, um, anyone who wants to engage in competitive um, uh, athletic activities, and competitive doesn't mean professional, it just means you know, uh, sustained, fairly intense exercise activity. Um, people who want to engage in, in those activities uh, and have any blood pressure concerns uh, should consider having an ultrasound of the heart, an echocardiogram. And I definitely agree with that recommendation. In fact, my recommendation in general, as I mentioned in the previous video, is to be a little more comprehensive with, with the testing. So that's the, the first thing that caught my attention. 
The other thing that uh, the document mentions is that for people who have a rise in blood pressure during exercise, um, you know, above what is um, uh, routinely expected, so if the blood pressure during exercise is 210, 220 or so, uh, the document says that we should consider doing a 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitor. Now, uh, that is a machine that measures the blood pressure for 24 hours or even 48 hours to let us know what is the blood pressure during uh, routine day-to-day -day activities. Because some people may have a normal blood pressure at rest when it's examined in the office or at home, but uh, during uh, routine activities uh, at work and so forth, it may be high. And that is called masked hypertension. So, so the document suggests that people who have this hypertensive response to exercise be evaluated for masked hypertension. And I think that's a reasonable consideration. And then the third thing that the document um, uh, mentions that, uh, that caught my attention uh, is uh, that people who have uh, blood pressure that is not well controlled at rest. So if you have chronic hypertension and your blood pressure, the top number is 160 or, or something in that, in that range, that you should probably refrain from doing competitive athletic activities, particularly weightlifting and, and severe static exercises until your blood pressure is better controlled. And I think that's, that's a very re reasonable um, recommendation and I endorse it. So, so that's it for today. I hope you found this um, episode um, uh, informative. As always, there will be, uh, the transcripts of the, um, uh, the show will be on the website of Athletic Heart SF, along with the links to the document that I mentioned so that you can consult it yourself and, um, and be educated by it. And, um, and that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email. And until next time, be well and be healthy. And I'll see you then.